Awesome. So we can go ahead and get started right now. Okay. Welcome, everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this Copic project. And uh, my name is Shannon, and I'm going to be your instructor for today's class. So before we go ahead and um, get into the project, I want to let you guys know a little bit about me and my background. So I have been using Copic markers since I was about in the eighth grade at 13 years old, and I've been using them ever since. So my passion for art took place around 13 years old, and that took me all the way to college, where I attended SCAD, the Savannah College of Art and Design, and have a BFA in illustration. So since then, I have been blessed enough to work with two Corporation Americas and share all of my years of experience and knowledge about Copic markers and the Copic range of products. So with that being said, I'm gonna show you guys what we're gonna to make today. And this is the end result right here. This is the wave pattern bookmark illustration. So we're gonna be using um, only three Copic colors, the Copic Sketch Fusion set number six, and that's B01, B04, and B06, as well as a black multiliner pen. So only a few tools today, but um, we're gonna learn some amazing techniques. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and flip my screen to my overhead view and show you guys the materials and um, our little practice sheet. Okay, so um, here I've got my materials that I'm using today and I've got my multi-liner pen. I am using 0.5, so this is my black multi-liner. The three sketch colors, B01, B04, and B06. My favorite pencil that I like to use, which is a mechanical pencil, and my eraser. So I've got in front of me um, my uh, rectangle already sketched out. It's two and a half inches by seven inches. But for the sake of the demo, if you guys want to make this a little bit smaller, um, that would be totally fine. Or if you want to make it bigger, that's really cool too. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and move my pencil aside, my multi-liner pen aside, and um, show you guys a little bit about these uh, sketch markers. So these are alcohol-based markers, and that makes them really easy and really amazing to make blending effects. So the Copic sketch comes in 358 colors, so a very wide range of colors. What's neat about this too is that it also comes as an empty marker so you can fill it with whatever ink you want. Um, just to tell you guys about the marker, you've got the medium broad nib over here and the super brush nib over here. This is also indicated by this little gray stripe. And then on the caps, you've got the color name and a uh, number code listed. So this one is Peacock Blue B06. And when you're storing your markers on horizontally, that is an amazing feature on a quick pull whenever you're coloring. Okay, I do wanna to mention too that if you don't happen to have these exact sketch colors and you happen to have a chow marker, this is what this marker looks like. The Copic chow marker has the same two nibs as the sketch. So it has the medium broad and the super brush. It also has that gray stripe on the side. Um, physical differences, obviously the cap looks a little bit different um, and it's shaped like a circle and not an oval, um, but uh, the features are the exact same. These are just sold at a little bit cheaper price point because it has less ink here in the barrel. This also only comes in 180 colors versus the full 358. But again, if you don't happen to have blues, we can make waves in whatever colors you want. Um, just to give you guys an example of that, say you only have these oranges, as long as you stay in the same kind of color family, this demo will work really well. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys just how to use the uh, two nibs on the sketch marker. And I'm gonna use B06 to start off with. Since this color is very dark, it'll be very easy for you guys to tell what I'm doing. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and start up here. Um, and I also wanna mention, I'm gonna move my paper a lot because that's gonna allow my hand to be very comfortable. Um, I don't like to work like this, it makes things very hard. So I'll be moving my paper a lot and I'm also right-handed. So I'm gonna work left to right. Just wanna let you guys know. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and um, make some lines here. Roll up my sleeve. And um, the first thing I wanna get, uh, let you guys know is just getting used to holding this marker. So I hold it kind of like this in my hand, but to get a very thin line, I'm gonna move it forwards. And I'm gonna draw here from the bottom to the top and just gently apply the very tip of the super brush nib. Um, practicing this is gonna help me also learn to get more control with my strokes. Now I'm gonna hold it just like a pencil and do the same kind of strokes from bottom to top. And again, I like to do this just as a warm up before we get started. Now I'm gonna take the marker and kind of scooch it further by and hold it by the end and apply the same um, kind of stroke with a super brush. So here we've got a very thin line, a medium width and a very thick line. Other things you can do with the super brush, you can make some amazing like dots and stippling effects. We can add um, different line variation by pressure point. So say I press really lightly on the paper and then press harder, lightly and then harder. And I'm not even lifting my hand to do this. So just by pressing down and lifting, you're gonna get a lot of different effects as well. Also, the famous flicking or feathering technique, uh, we'll be doing a lot of that um, further down in this practice and in the demo. So that's just a little introduction to this um, super brush nib. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the other side, the medium broad, and I'm gonna practice another um, few techniques. So I do wanna show you guys this nib a little bit closer. This nib is a lot stiffer and um, will allow you to get more precision and more detailed marks. So I'm gonna make four different lines with this nib. I'm gonna use this very edge right down here at the bottom then the top, then this side, and then the full um, thick line. So again, this, <laughs> to hold it, to make this very thin line, I hold it further back in my hand. That's just what works for me. And then I gently apply that stroke. Notice too how much thinner this is than the super brush. And because this nib is very stiff, it's not gonna give you any waviness or like shakiness in your hand. It's much easier to get control out of this nib. Okay, so now I'm gonna move up and use the top. So I'm gonna turn it. Did you guys see that? I went from working down here and then I flipped it. And I'm gonna do the same kind of thing. These lines are a little bit thicker, gives a little bit more pigment there. I'll do one more line. Okay, now I'm gonna curl it yet again. And I'm gonna use this width. And for that, I'm gonna turn it forwards again. I'm also holding the marker almost straight vertical. This allows me to get the most control and I just smoothly slide my pinky on the bottom of the paper. So I'm using my finger to glide my hand and give me some more support. And then last but not least, the very thick side to the medium broad. So you've got very thin to thin to a middle width and then a very thick. And again, these will look different um, compared to the super brush because this nib is more flexible. This nib is gonna give you more precision. So in the same way, you can add dots, just like little um, marks. Um, we can't apply the pressure point um, technique to this nib because it is stiff, but we can turn our hand and turn the marker. So for example, and I turn it. So I'm using, you know, multiple ways of how to hold it and I'm just moving my wrist along with it. So those are just, um, you know, some basic ways to use this nib. And now I'm gonna go ahead and move my paper up a little bit. And I'm gonna move on to this area that says technique number one. And I still have out my B06 um, medium broad. So I'm gonna do here, if you notice, I've divided this rectangle and this rectangle is about uh, one inch by two and a half inches, roughly. Just 
loosely sketched out on my paper and I've divided it into thirds. So I know that um, other markers can um, have seen this before with this technique, but with the um, Copics, this is very easy to show color saturation and blending. So I'm gonna apply with this medium broad some quick um, strokes just to fill in this rectangle. And again, this sheet is for practice, so it does not have to be perfect, but I just quickly filled in this space. And um, as you can see, I got that little pencil mark here at the two thirds mark. And when I'm speaking to you guys right now, I'm giving it time to dry. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go back over it again with another layer. Again, the same medium broad nib, just a couple of strokes here and then I'll stop. So we've already got just the same color, but that's one layer of ink. This is two layers. And again, as I'm talking here, I'm just giving it time to dry a little bit. And now I'll go ahead and add that third and final layer for this technique. And I'm gonna hold this up just really quick for you guys to see. So we've got one layer of B06, the second layer and the third. So it's amazing what you can get here with just one color and by layering. This is an amazing technique with Copics. Okay, now I'm gonna slide on over my workspace. And um, as I drew out here with my pencil, I've got B04 and B01. This technique, I'm gonna start with my lightest color, B01. And I'm actually gonna use the super brush side for this technique. This is a very well-known flicking or feathering technique. I showed you guys a little bit of that right up here. And what we kind of do is scoop or just slowly lift the marker. If you're working on a slick marker paper, you might hear that very nice marker squeak sound. But um, yeah, this marker, we just like to you know lift it and like feather it. So I'm gonna work a little bit halfway as my arrow here indicates. And there's a nice middle ground in the, where these colors will blend. Okay, so I drew a line there just for um, establishing a boundary. And I'm just gonna slowly apply and flick the color up slightly past the middle. Okay. So I've got one layer of B01 down on the paper. I'm gonna cap this, set it aside, and take out B04. And I'm gonna do the same thing, but working in an opposite direction. I'm gonna tilt this, maybe you guys can see that better. And work just a little bit past. So again, just light flicking, getting that ink down in this rectangular space. Okay, so I'm gonna cap this and bring out my B01 again. So I do wanna say that um, I find the most success with blending when I work light to dark, back to light. And whenever um, I need to get uh, you know, more of a soft gradient, I just find that going back over again with those light colors really helps to reactivate this darker pigment. So if you guys are practicing this at home, um, you might be able to see like these uh, B04 strokes start to kind of like um, feather or start to just again, reactivate into the B01. So the technique, um, like I said, I like to use is I'll go up and bring it down. Then I'll go further up, bring it down and then towards the top and feather it down. So, and then go back over it again, as many times as you think you need. And again, we're just gently kind of flicking that pigment up. So you can keep working it and keep using the same space to get that desired effect that you want. But I'm gonna cap that and go ahead and show you guys up closer. Actually, Shannon, real quick, can you hold this here? Cause a few people wanted to take screenshots of this. Oh, uh, right here? Yep, this okay, one I'm and the other it. technique too. Oh, both of them? Yeah, might as well. Uh, hold on, let me try and turn it. Okay. I'm just gonna hold it here till 
Oh, the whole page they're asking. Oh, whole page, okay. And then zoom back out, yeah. Okay, I think this is about the whole page. Yep, looks okay. like. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, this is just layering. And this is why I love practice sheets. And also I do want to mention, speaking of practice, it does matter too, because Copic markers are such a high quality marker. You need to get good marker paper. So I'm actually using a medium to heavyweight marker paper. It's very smooth, kind of like Bristol paper. And um, I'll lift this up and show you guys the backside. Actually, so again, it's not really paper. bleeding through at all, maybe at these pressure points, but otherwise this marker paper, nothing is on my table. So I Shannon, really love thick paper for that audience. reason. Shannon, we had one more question from the audience. Sure. Do you have to worry about the dark ink affecting the lighter color pen when you go back to light? Oh yes, yeah. so when I alternate? Yeah, so with yeah. these two colors, because um, you know this number ends in a four and this one ends in a one, that, there's only so many, um, you know, three numbers in between. Now, if I was going from say, you know, B29 to B00, I would um, you know, be more cautious with that. But even then, if you blend a very light to a very dark, um, if your nib does get a little bit of a stain, have a practice sheet available and just like squeegee the color off. Or um, if you're familiar with the Copic range of products, you know that we have a zero colorless blender. And that blender, if you apply a few drops of ink to that or even do a technique that's similar to this. So say you have your brush of your blender, if you apply that to the light color, that will also subtract that dark ink. So there's multiple ways you can try and get rid of um, like a stain on your nib. And if there's a very permanent stain that's applied over time, you can also replace the nib. So a lot of different options there. Does that answer the question? Yep. Okay, okay, sweet. So now that we've got familiar and comfortable with these uh, few techniques, I'm gonna go ahead and slide this over a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the actual demo now. So over here, like I said, I've sketched out with my ruler, uh, two and a half inches by seven inches. And um, I will cut this out in a second. So that's why that dash mark is there. I've got one little curly cue drawn out here. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring, you know, the finished piece here just for comparison. Okay, so I do wanna say, I love to use my pencil first because I often make mistakes or want to make changes. You can, however, if you're very confident in your lines, start off with a multi-liner pen. So this pen, as written on the pen, it says pigment, ink, water, and Copic proof. So this means that um, if you apply this ink first and then your marker, it should not smudge. So that's what's really neat about this. I'm just not necessarily that confident yet, starting with the black lines. So I'm gonna use my pencil first. Okay, so I've got one little swirl kind of drawn on here at the bottom. And um, again, I'm just gonna work bottom to top and kind of stack these shapes as I'm moving along. So I've got one curl here. I'm just gonna kind of bring it around into segments of three and just sketch out these swirly kind of doodles. So again, I'm just kind of, these are organic shapes. They don't have to be perfect. Um, I'm just starting from the root or like the crest, I suppose, this kind of center point and just bringing my lines around. Also, I do wanna say, if you go outside the lines, no big deal, this will be cut out later, so feel free. Okay, I'm gonna alternate this. I do wanna to mention too that this wave, I guess crest faces to the right and this one faces to the left. I like to alternate as I work up and that gives me more of an interesting composition and allows for more contrast. So I'll bring this around. Yeah, I'll finish that right there. I do want to say as well that if um, like in this space down here, and I can just draw like a curved shape like that. And again, this is going off my picture plane, but it's giving me a more accurate way to bring the colors. So for example, if this is B01, I can have this be B06 
you know, just to make sure we have contrast there. I'm just drawing some lines to get off the picture plane. And just slowly kind of working my way up the bookmark. That will come around here. Does anyone have any questions on this part of the demo? No, we good? Okay. And again, I'll just draw this one last shape and then I will um, bring out a shape that has already been drawn. Okay, is everybody good? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and take my practice sheet and again um, can cut this out right here. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick. Give you guys time to um, finish sketching out your wave designs. Okay, I'm going to set my practice sheet aside. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring out um, just a sketched out bookmark here. Okay, I'm also just going to keep this finished piece next to me so you guys can see, you know, step-by-step step how we're moving forward and how we're gonna make this. Okay, so um, I'm gonna start with my lightest color. And the reason I like to work um, with my lightest color first is say I go outside the lines and I accidentally color an area that I did not want to be light. Um, if I use my darker color next, it should cover it up very easily. So that's why I like to work light to dark. And again, I'm gonna start from the bottom and work my way up. I might need to turn my paper just so you guys can see, but I'm going to outline a shape And I'm also working from the inside out. So all of my inside little wave segments are gonna be my lightest color. And then the middle, obviously my midtone B04, and then the outside will be B06. Okay, so I outlined my little segment here first, because again, I have a tendency of getting lost in my creations and I might move outside the line. So I like to do this first, and then I'll kind of quickly um, wiggle in the color. And this is just my first layer. I do want to show you guys this down in my scratch space here. I just quickly fill in the color, almost like a slithering snake. That is what works best for me. And I also like to work relatively fast when I'm using my Copic markers, um, just because I want all the colors to blend cohesively together. And if you give it too much time or if you move too slow, I find that um, you get more of that streaky look. And if you're going for that look, then by all means, that's totally fine. But um, for me and for my illustrations, I like to have them um, very creamy and almost painterly. So for me to get that effect, that is how I like to work. Okay, and again, if I'm hoping that my hand doesn't get in the way too much here, but, and um, yeah, so I'll just keep kind of slowly filling these spaces in. What's nice about the super brush too is that, oh, I got a mistake. Luckily I can cover that up later. Um, what's nice about these nibs is that they're so flexible. So when I was showing you guys the practice sheet earlier, I was using the medium broad. Um, that's good for quick coloring and um, you know precision, but these shapes are very organic and curvy. And this nib allows for me to be more flexible with those lines. So again, I'm just slowly kind of wiggling in my color and just, you know, practicing how I like to hold the marker. And again, I have also been using markers for about 11 or 12 years, these Copics, and I still learn new things every day. So it just takes a little time a little patience, a little practice. Okay. And I'm gonna go outside the lines there cause I'd rather get that nice smooth finish. 
and then quickly fill in this larger area. Okay, so I think I'm at a point where I've got all those inside shapes kind of drawn out there. Oh, actually, I'm going to color this one. Well, maybe I'll do that a different color. That's the beauty of drawing light to dark. You can always go over it again with your darker color. Okay, so again, I've got my first. Now I'm going to add this beautiful B04. Okay. So I'm gonna start down here. I'm gonna cover this little boo-boo up and slowly start to add in. Again, I'm just gonna turn my paper. My hand loves to just go right over the paper and I love to work like this so you guys can't see anything. Ugh. Okay, and again, I am a big advocate of turning your paper around. You got to be comfortable as possible. If you're creating and your hand is not comfortable, your lines are going to be kind of crazy. Okay, turn it back around. And just keep filling in this space. I do want to mention too, um, if anyone has any questions, just again, let me know. If I need to move uh, slower, also let me know. I just want to make this demo really good for you guys. Um, but while we're coloring, I do want to mention that um, kind of what I mentioned earlier in the, in the video when I said, you know, sketch comes in 358 colors. It's a lot, oh my gosh, there's a lot of colors to choose from. So whenever you're trying to yeah. you know, add to your Copic collection, I like to stay within the color family. So Shannon. yes. Uh, they're asking if you can slow down a little, please. Okay. Do you want me to pause here or? Do you, guys in the audience, do you need her to stay here to pause? Um, what do you want her to do right now? Okay, just slow down for now pause and then yeah they just finished the outline so you're kind of flying ahead to the colors like i know we've rehearsed this so everybody in the audience we've rehearsed this a couple times so this is like muscle memory for shannon at this point yeah but, sorry about that guys no worries, no worries it's not a problem it's not a problem but like maybe you can discuss like someone pointed out how uh some of the colors in the finished product look a little lighter than they do right now in this in progress work. Can you tell them a little bit about uh, Copic alcohol ink? Yeah, sure. So um, what I was just kind of talking about there with the color range too, can go into the alcohol ink as well. So um, yeah, these colors over here, um, well, these have actually been, this marker I finished a few days ago as practice. So um, it could be that the markers have just had more time to settle. So they've gotten a little lighter. But um, further on in the demo, I'll be adding more um, layers to this, to these colors. So um, you'll see more contrast. I think the reason why these areas at the tips or like in between and the midsections, they look a lot lighter just because there's more contrast. So again, when I add more value and I add more flicking here of the same color, this area will look a whole lot lighter. So again, this is the same color that I'm applying right here. But because I've added more layers and I've added more contrast, it looks whiter. And that's kind of one of those, again, another technique I want to show you guys just by layering and knowing where you want your highlights to be, it can give you a lot of you know, pop and contrast. And um, I do want to kind of just wrap up what I was saying a little bit earlier while you guys are working. Um, so the color system, like these are B0, 1, 4, and 6. So when the 0, that number 0, indicates how saturated the color is. So if you're trying to look at blues and you see a 0 in front, that means it's the most saturated or the most fluorescent or bright. If you're looking at a like a duller blue color, you'll see like B93. So B93, because there's a nine in front of it, it's going to be more um, cool or I guess uh, neutralized or grayed down. 
So if you're looking at B93, 95, 97 or whatnot, those are gonna have more gray tones. So, and that's the same across the board. So if you're looking at yellows, you know, Y06 is gonna be almost like a highlighter, very bright, very vivid. If you're looking at Y23, it's gonna give you a little bit softer, duller looking yellow. So if you're looking at color choices and figuring out, oh my gosh, where do I start? Um, just see and look at like the Copic um, color chart, which is on our website. And you can look at, okay, I use these types of blues in my project. So I wanna try and look at buying these types of blues. Um, personally, in my collection of Copics, um, I have a lot of blues and earth tone colors. I just use those a lot. I draw a lot of landscapes and whatnot. So I like to collect these colors. But again, it all just depends on what you draw, what you are crafting with and um, you know, going from there. And also things like this, what we're using today, how it's a set, um, those are also great places to start. So with these fusion colors, they're just packs of three and they are meant to be very harmonious or fuse well together, hence the name fusion. And um, if you guys have any other questions, I'd be free to answer those or just let me know when I should get back to it. So Shannon, real quick, let's go over the line work one more time because some folks are just joining us. Um, okay. You don't have to redraw the line work, but maybe just kind of give them an idea of like where to start, how to set that, how to set this up so they can uh, join us in coloring. Okay, yeah. So I'll bring out that sheet I cut out. And again, um, all I was doing was kind of making a curl shape. So that's all I was starting with. And then I was kind of going from this root or this kind of like end point and just bringing it around. I did spend uh, you know, more time sketching this one out before um, and was moving quicker for this for the demo. But yeah, so all I was doing is taking this and bringing it around. And like I was saying earlier, I was just stacking them one on top of another. And let's say like this area here is gonna be the darkest color. And that against these lighter colors will look very nice. It'll pop out more because there's more contrast. So again, I'll draw another shape right there and then bring it around. And again, I like to work outside my picture plane because again, I can cut that out. And so I've got one, two, three, so I'm good. But yeah, so this is kind of like how I got started. It's almost like taking your doodles and your notebooks from high school and whatnot and applying them to a bookmark or a pattern. And then say we've got areas here off to the side. Do I wanna color that one solid color? Or maybe I'll just draw two lines and color those other three colors right there. So again, this is why I like to start with my pencil and um, I can make erases and make changes if I want. But yeah, that's kind of just how I get the pattern started. Um, I think if you guys want a template, I don't know if we can upload it to Michael's um, because I do- We can like, upload I can, it to Michael's or we can put it on our website, yeah. On our website, okay, yeah. So basically um, when we're done with this class, when this class wraps up, I'm gonna give you guys links to all of our uh, Copic social channels. Um, we will be posting, you know, here's the projects that we're working on. Here's the next Michael's class, um, our giveaways, anything like that. So uh, you can follow those, follow those uh, social channels and you'll see um, these, you know, the templates for this or whatever projects that we're working on in the Michael's classes. Yeah. Okay. okay. You want to pick back up, Shannon? Sure. Yeah, I'll right. set this aside and bring out what I was working on right here. And um, yeah, so... I'm gonna go ahead and pick back up where I left off. And that was B04. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep slowly filling in this pigment. Okay. 
I do want to say too that if you guys um, like how these look when they're done and you don't want to add the black lines, that is also fine. Um, I'm a big fan of just line art in general, so I use those a lot for my line art, the multi-liner pens. Does anyone have any um, questions pertaining to like how I'm coloring or anything like that? I'm just gonna keep working up this pattern. And I do wanna to say too, if I did move too fast earlier, this will be recorded. So you guys can um, watch the video again later. What's nice about using these um, fusion colors and just making a bookmark like this for practice is, um, you know, it's like a portable swatch card in a sense. So you have these, you know, colors laid out and you can see how well they look together. Only a few more segments left of this B04. And I think we're almost halfway done. I do want to mention too, um, as we're all coloring, that um, the Copic Award just actually closed. And if you want to see more, um, you know, variety of how people use their Copic markers from around the world, um, you can check that out online as well. So there's a lot of amazing ways that people are using their Copic markers. And it's very fun and very inspiring to see how they do that. I will say if you guys made your shapes larger, um, when you're coloring with a large space, it's also really nice if you're able to work quicker because again, it's just markers have that natural kind of a streak, but if you're working in layers, you can you know go back over it and kind of you know soften those marks, which makes that really nice feature of using the Copic markers. I kind of have actually, Nate, I have a question for the audience. So for the people out there that are joining me today, joining us today, um, if they have Copic markers already, which kind of color family do they have the most of? So I kind of want to know, you know, do people have a lot of purples or do they have a lot of the blues? I'm kind of curious to see. That's a really good question. Let's check in with the audience. Audience members, uh, sound off. So unknown host says green. Greens, ah, yes, they're so pretty. Lux says blues. Gihana Mood says blues, or actually says orange. Camelia Perez Ace says blue. Uh, Connie Akers, lots of pinks. Nice. Yashini says sketching, so probably the grays. Let's see, ah. reds, greens, blues, and neutrals, greens, lots of RVs. Actually, a lot of folks are answering right now, which is great. Oranges and skin tones, uh, blues and greens. Lots of blues, actually. Kobik has a lot of rich blues. Yeah, and if you look at like the color chart too, we have you know a really wide variety of blue colors to choose from. So, but yeah, the greens are super pretty as well. I will say after blues and earth tones, I probably own, I guess more yellow green. I like those colors. They're very pretty. So Patty S has a question. After using pencil to draw the initial lines, can the pencil be erased after colors are applied? Or is that something we're gonna be saving for later in the work? Okay, yeah, so I can try and illustrate that like maybe right here in this section, um, even though it's gonna be colored. Once the um, Copic ink is laid on top of the pencil, it is basically impossible to lift off. Same with when you use watercolors, if you paint over your pencil, it's very hard to lift all of it off. I can try right now with my eraser to get some of this but it's only gonna be the areas I didn't cover. So really I didn't pick up much there. Um, so yeah, if you want, um, I just have a regular eraser. If you have a kneaded eraser, 
you can take it and like sponge essentially off your lines to make them really faint. So that way, if you're working only with pale colors, you won't really see a lot of it. Or you can have, say, a light box available, trace over your pencils, and then that way you have no pencils whatsoever. You know, just very, very faint lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I do want to say too, um, I think my pencil lead is HB in my mechanical pencil. Mm -hmm. So that's going to give more of a neutral. If you want like a harder lead, it's going to be very faint. So maybe a 2H or a 4H, um, those will give very faint lines as well. But yeah. Okay, so blues and greens, people have a lot of. That's awesome. I'm wondering too, whenever we are finished with this demo, I want to see what you guys have created. Maybe someone out there has made waves out of greens, three green colors. Okay, so again, just keep adding that color and don't be afraid to move your paper around. I feel like I'm dancing practically whenever I color because I move it around so much. I was terrible at life drawing in college. I could not just sit still with those same easel in place. I had to move. So again, I'm going outside my lines here. I'm just getting in that nice color. I actually think I might show you guys what happens if you know you make a mistake. So let's say I am coloring over here or finishing this and I accidentally go up into another segment. So an easy way to correct that is just go back in with that color. I've got again B04 is what got, you know, I guess contaminated. Um, and I will just kind of reactivate that color and try and blend it as much as possible. Now granted, by going back over again with that original color, it's going to get darker. So if you don't want it to get darker, because like I said right there, it got pretty dark. Um, you can use our zero colorless blender and that blender will lift the pigment up. So it'll lighten it a lot. And then you can go back over again with B04. So I just want to show that in case you guys, you know, accidentally went outside the lines or Maybe your dog bumped into you at your table or something while you're working or kid came running into the room, who knows. But yeah, I'm just gonna keep working. And um, I do wanna ask the audience, am I working uh, slow enough? Do I need to speed up? Is my pace okay? Seems like it's fine right now. Seems like it's good? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, sweet. But yeah, the next step after this is just going to be kind of what I showed you guys there when I was fixing the little mistake. And we're going to add some more contrast. I actually have another question for the audience. I wanna know how many Copic markers people have that are joining us, whether it's three or 300, kind of curious. How big are people's collections? Inky's got 12, uh, I'll, oh. I'll join in too. I work for Copic and I have about 20, 24, I believe. Nice, that's a good range. Jennifer San Jose has 60. Unknown Host has close to 300. Dang. 30, 31. A bunch of folks have zero. That's cool too. 50, 113, 100, 6, 22. It's like I'm counting off bingo numbers. 110. <laughs> uh, four sets new. Nice. Good call. 120, 6, 50, 46. Uh, let's see. Oof. I'm sorry, Lori. Let's see. 36, 30. 25, 12. So there's like some pretty good varieties and at least yeah. some folks are going to be able to like do some blending techniques. Yeah. And then um, a follow up to that, how many of you guys only have sketch? 
That's a good question. How many of y'all only have sketch? Do any of you have chow or anything like that? Couple folks, let's see, Brenda Ortiz, sketch only, sketch only. A lot of folks are only sketch. Leanne Jensen has chow. Um, Honey Acres has a mix. I also have a mix of markers. Same. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so a little history lesson to get nerdy here. The mm. first Copic marker to come out was actually the original or the classic. And that's the marker that doesn't have the super brush nib. So um, it's not necessarily as popular as the sketch, but that marker came out in 1987. And that was followed by the sketch. I believe that was 1993. And then the chow was the last one. So yeah, Copics have been around. Um, I am very young, so they've been around long before I was around, but these are the kind of original, I guess, the first really good alcohol markers. So yeah, and I have been using them, like I said, beginning of the video, about 11, 12 years now. And I just got over, I think 115 colors. Um, and I have a little bit of all three, but clearly I am a bias towards the super brush nib. So I have more of the um, chow and sketch. Oh, uh, I'm gonna pause here for just a hot second. And I do wanna, while everyone's finishing up, I do wanna ask another question to the audience. How many years have people been using their markers? Doesn't so I said like I've been using it for 11, give or take. Two years, about, about four. four. Yeah. Oh, awesome. So here's a fun fact that I told our boss at our first uh, dinner before I, right when I started working for the company, uh, I didn't start with Copic markers. I started with Prismacolors. And that actually taught me a lot of marker technique that I use now with Copic. So for those of you in the audience who are not using Copic markers, that's totally cool. Please try us out. You know, I feel that we are great markers and you should give us a shot but uh, work on your marker technique with what you've got now, like keep practicing. Yeah, no, it is true. And like um, when I was 13, I begged my mom to buy me a set of Copic markers. And the first set that I got was the Chow um, six piece skin tone set. And so that was my first you know, introduction. I was really into practicing eyes and like noses and like, I guess, facial features. So. That's why I bought that skin piece set or portrait color set. And um, I actually have those same six colors today. I've just had to get the refills and the, a few nibs replaced. But yeah, that's another reason why when I bought the markers, I almost had to put like a PowerPoint together for my mom and explain like, <laughs> I know they're a little pricey, but like I can have this for decades. I'm gonna treat these things like royalty. And honestly, that's, that's what I've done. And that's why I've kept buying Copics. So. For the past 11 years, I've just slowly added more colors and totally worth the investment. And not everybody goes to art school like I did, but when I went to art school, I put my you know markers in a large kind of lunch bin essentially and took them everywhere. So now I actually have a Copic wallet, which is fantastic um, for transportation. But, um, but yeah, I've had the same chow markers for 11 years, which blows my mind, but. I also like almost keep them under a lock, padlock key, because I <laughs> love them so much to keep them protected. Okay, so um, should I wait a little bit more for people to catch up? A little, a little time for folks to catch up would be good. Okay, perfect. But yeah, um, I don't know if there's any other questions in the chat. Uh, Veronica wants to know which school you went to. She went to Parsons. Oh, sweet, yeah. So I actually, um, I thought I had nibs to show you guys too, but when I'm doing this demo, if you see this ring flashing, um, I actually got recruited to go to SCAD. So SCAD has athletic programs, which might be the only art school that does. And um, I got recruited there because I was a really good swimmer. So I went to SCAD to study illustration and also was a national champion athlete. So that is kind of my reason why I went to SCAD. And um, Savannah, Georgia is also Southern and it's a lot warmer. So I liked being by the beach. That was really neat. I'm from the landlocked Midwest. So that was really fun. 
Although swimming in the ocean cannot always be fun because there's jellyfish, so. Oh, Patty's niece goes to SCAD right now. Ah, sweet. Yeah, SCAD is awesome. Um, a lot of these, like, so when I was in illustration, I continued to use my markers. Now at SCAD, um, I recently graduated not, not too long ago. They push digital medium heavily, but um, I said, you know what? I use these markers. This is what I'm good at. This is what I want to be in my portfolio. So I just kept at it. And I really love using these markers and tools. And, you know, at SCAD, I had scanners, I had, you know, things to photograph my art with. So that was great. But, um, but yeah, the illustration department was really down for whatever you're comfortable with. Again, they push you towards digital, but, you know, at the end of the day, if you love to work with markers, which I do, that's what I did and my portfolio reflected it. So, but yeah, SCAD's a really good place to be. Are there any other questions? Um, real quick, uh, Huey Chang asks, uh, Huey Chuang, I'm sorry, asks, what brand of paper do you recommend for these markers? I said any medium to heavyweight marker paper works. Um, your thoughts on it? Yes. Yeah, so um, because I like to use markers and I'll go on top maybe with like pens or colored pencils or whatnot, um, I like to use the medium to heavyweight. Now you can get um, a thinner paper. You can get some kind of marker papers also have like almost a, a tissue paper effect. And um, those are good for tracing or for laying down your pencil marks, maybe a few swatches. But otherwise I like, um, this paper I'm using is I think 106 pound, or close to 100 pound marker paper. And this is what I like. And I will actually show you the backside so again, there's hardly any bleed through at all. Nothing is on my workspace. So I like this paper for that reason. Um, but again, just depends on what you're going for. Since I love to layer, this paper works the best. And obviously there's brands out there like, you know, Canson, Strathmore, et cetera, that have marker paper. Mm -hmm. All right, you wanna get moving? Okay, sweet. So next step now, since we've got our first layer of ink down, we're going to go ahead and use all three colors again to add those, you know, hints of contrast. So I know earlier on the, one of the questions was, why does this look so much lighter? Well, now we're going to add the contrast and the flicking technique. So B01 again, that nice mint blue. And I'm going to start at the base and flick my pen up. So again, it kind of looks like that. You've got more color at the bottom and you lift it up. Okay, so again, I might need to turn my paper to get my hand nice and comfy and just flick the pen up. And I don't know if you guys will hear that nice satisfying brush stroke of the marker, but I love that feature. So now this is starting to pop out more because we're adding more contrast. And at this point in the um, process as well, I will kind of bounce around more. I don't really follow a particular order here. I'm just giving enough time for these shapes to dry. So this is layer number two. And then I'll go over again with layer number three, just like we showed at the beginning. And again, for anyone who logged in a little later, um, you can always, I missed a spot. You can always log in and watch it recorded. So I'll add some contrast right there at the top to really, you know, differentiate this shape from this one. Let me move these to the side. Okay, I'll just keep bringing this pigment up. And if you notice too, I'm holding the marker pretty far back in my hand. And this, again, this is what works for me when I'm doing this. If you want to hold it closer, that gives you more control. But because I want to flick it and lift it, I like to have it a little further back. But again, that's how we got that practice sheet, just to get comfy. Okay, so I will start adding another layer to make these even darker. These are really starting to pop and I'm really excited to see what you guys have made. And thank you guys also, I wanna say thank you for the engagement in this uh, first demo. I'm always happy to learn how other people are using their Copic markers. So glad to hear we've got some fans out there. 
I actually really enjoy how lively the chat is and how everybody has like Yeah, I really appreciate that. Please keep talking. You are not making more work for me. I'm enjoying this. Please let me know. Yeah, no, this is really nice. I also love Copic markers because there's such a good community behind them. So again, I have more of a fine art illustration background, but learning how like people with crafting use these markers and, you know, manga illustrators or, you know, sequential artists, I really love seeing how people use these. And what's great too about these Michael's classes is that you know, we can show you guys multiple ways how, you know, we know how to use them, which also excites me for other little projects I'll share with you guys in the next few weeks. So up here, I went ahead and added some, uh, some more layers because this shape is very big. And you'll see me doing that more with the B06 because these shapes are larger. I like to add more layers at the bottom and the top. But these lighter shapes, um, these have smaller kind of wave, wave segments. So I'm just working kind of bottom to the top. Okay, once you've had as many layers as you want, you can cap it and set aside. And we can already notice the difference of, you know, this is the same color, but light, I mean, light up here, dark at the bottom, just by that layering. Really creamy, very smooth. So I'm getting pretty excited. These are going to turn out fantastic. Okay, whoop, got to get out my brush marker again, brush side. Oh, and I do want to mention too, I'll pause for just a second. Um, this nib, so I um, have had these markers for a long time, but to clean this off, so say this area up here is getting a little bit too clogged, um, you can take either like a zero blender refill or, um, like some nail polish remover or something and with a Q-tip and you can clean this area off. I wanna try and keep the focus here. <laughs> but um, this area up here, you can clean off very easily. Sometimes this gets um, ink on it simply from the cap. Sometimes, you know, it's just from use. So again, to keep these markers for as long as possible, because again, I've maintained mine and had the same markers for 11 years, just, you know, keeping this area clean and uh, keeping them stored horizontally, not vertically, will save you a lot of life in your marker. Okay, so I'll get back to um, just adding more layers here. So again, I'll start from the bottom and just flick the ink up. I think I mentioned it almost too quickly earlier as well. How I said, you know, when I went to SCAD, I carried these markers with me everywhere. I started off with a lunchbox and then I found the Copic wallet. So that's also a really nice way, the wallet to store your markers and keep them very safe. Okay. Oh, and I do want to mention too that the wallet, um, has 24, 36, or 72 slots. Okay, I'm just flicking this color up. And again, just kind of bouncing around, making sure I've got all of these marks that I want. I need to turn this so my hand is comfortable. And I got another question for the audience, actually. I want to know um, how many ladies and gentlemen we have out there and um, who's watching with you. Is it just you by yourself doing the demo? Do you have any pets with you, any kids nearby? Uh, just to kind of see who I'm giving this lesson to or this project. Sound off, folks. Is it just you working on this? You got anybody watching with you, friends, pets? fish count. <laughs> oh, there's a puppy. Oh, yeah. Oh, mother and daughter team working on this. Oh, sweet. Cat named Cricket. Oh, a cat named Cricket? Oh. And a seven-year-old working with the, yeah, that's great. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it's never too early to start coloring and honestly keep coloring. Aussie. I love Aussies.
That's nice, Brenda. Brenda goes, my daughter watched briefly before leaving for band, and my mom is over today as well. I just gave her a set of Copics for her birthday in August. Oh, nice. Honestly, best birthday present you could ever get. <laughs> well, sweet. That's awesome. Okay, again, I'm just going in with that B04, flicking in these lines, uh, these brush marks. I also really love how Copic calls this the super brush nib. It really is quite super. I think in my lifetime, I have probably used, I don't know, 20 different brands of markers. And I keep going back to these. <laughs> really definitely worth the investment. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and set these aside. Okay, almost done with this layering. And the last part we've got is just the outlining. So almost there guys. And thank you so much for joining me once again. Really excited to be here. Okay, so I'm just flicking up this B06. And at this point, because we're using the darkest color, we're really gonna see these pops. I love layering with the dark colors. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep adding in these layers and keep flicking. And since we are making a bookmark, um, I'm, I also kind of was tempted to make this a little bit larger because I read a lot of large books. Being an artist, I like to buy books that have like images or references in them and um, kind of like coffee table books. So I'm kind of wondering what kind of books the audience out there is reading, whether they're fiction, nonfiction, or eBooks. Curious, always good to find a good read. Actually, before we get to that, we do have some questions from the audience. Um, they want to okay. know, um, are we going to be teaching any other classes? I did mention that we are doing one every week for a few weeks, but mm -hmm. uh, do you want to give a preview of like upcoming projects? Oh yes, okay, this is exciting. So um, yeah, I was working with our team again. Uh, I'll be leading you guys for the next uh, you know, few Thursdays in October. So this is the 8th, we've got one on the 15th. These are all at 4 p.m. Central time, by the way. So very easy for y'all. Um, so yeah, we've got one next week. We're gonna be making goodie bags and I'm gonna show you guys how to blend ribbons. So we've got satin ribbon that we're gonna blend our markers on. We've got paper flowers we're gonna blend on. So that's in the next demo, that is next Thursday, again at 4 p.m. Central Time. And that is going to be using the Copic Chow. So the Chow Six Piece Brights. There's a good variety of colors in that set. And similar to today, how I said, if you don't have sketch, you can use Chow vice versa. If you only have sketch and that's all you have at your disposal, you can use that for next week as well. But yeah, and the week after that is a very exciting demo. That one gets a little more advanced. We're going to make um, shrink plastic jewelry. So we can actually blend this alcohol marker on plastic and um, make some fall themed earrings. And so I'm actually wearing a pair of those earrings today. I should take one off and show you guys as a little teaser, but um, this pumpkin shape, I'm gonna set that aside or maybe set it on the white because it's the transparent shrink plastic. But this little pumpkin right there, I actually made with Copic markers entirely. So that's week three. We're showing how to make jewelry and um, out of shrink plastic and blended and created entirely with Copics. So that's a very fun, a little more hands-on. And the last demo, we're gonna be using the sketch markers again, and that will be using the airbrush system. So for all of you guys who wanna have like cool gradations or large background spaces, the airbrush is very, very neat, so. So we're going to cover two things real fast, Shannon. Folks said yeah. they were reading a lot of murder mysteries. 
um, some fiction and nonfiction. Uh, someone brought up Black History nonfiction, a lot of good reading there, paranormal romance, comics, and fantasy. But we have one specific question right here, not related to reading materials. What are they going to need for next week's class? Uh, yes, so um, the six-piece uh, brights, um, small paper bags, and again, all of this is bought at Michael's. So I either bought it um, in store or online. But um, we've got paper flowers. Um, I don't have them right next to me at this moment, but um, yeah, on, when you go to sign up for the class though, the image for the class has all of the materials in the photo. Oh, good, okay. Yeah, so we got like oh, just basic things like the, the markers, the paper baggie, um, ribbon, and paper flowers. Yeah. So, but yeah. Um, I do want to mention too, uh, this bookmark, we're making a bookmark today, but if you want to apply this to say like a card or like a nice background image for something or whatnot, this is a great repeat pattern um, that you can use on a lot of different things. Okay, so now we've got our layers. We've got all this depth shown here with this wave design. And again, these markers don't bleed through. My workspace is still clean. And the last thing we're gonna to do today is get out this multi-liner pen. So this is 0.5. And I like this width. I like the little bit thicker widths. Those are my go-to. So I got my 0.5. Oh, and I do wanna to mention too, um, the cap also has the number listed. So that's pretty cool. And this is black because the color is black. So if you're looking at say, I don't know, our pink multi-liner, this will be bright pink. So very easy to tell the colors. Um, Copic loves to have their color matching caps. That's a great feature. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna get this comfy in my hand. And this is the point where I'm gonna let you guys know some tips on inking. So um, whenever I'm drawing with my lines, I like to just do like one smooth line. Oh, you guys didn't see that, sorry. One smooth line and then I'll go back again and add like layers essentially to get line variation. So for example, just kind of like, you know, it goes from thin to thick. I'm not using multiple pens for that. I'm just using, you know, uh, a parallel line technique to add more line variation. Okay, so again, um, I'm gonna work bottom to top. And for this, you might have to wait for your ink to dry slightly, otherwise it could smudge. Um, but yeah, I love multi-liners. And before this, I was using, um, what was it, like a micron pen? But I found those pens to um, like bleed a little bit more. So I really love how Copic has a pen specifically for their markers, which is really great. Um, I also want to mention too, so I'm going to go ahead and like scribble something up here. So you guys can see that and I'll use that later. Um, what I'll do with this swatch later is try and erase over it and show how it doesn't smudge. Okay, so I'm just going to keep working. And here is uh, tip number one. So I'm going to try and draw this entire shape without lifting my hand. But odds are I'm going to have to lift my hand at some point because my, my wrist is just going to get uncomfortable. So what I like to do is stop and lift my hand and adjust whenever I'm at what I call an intersection. So if we see on this finished bookmark, let me show you guys this. So if you see here, like this big crest outside, this is an intersection right there. That's an intersection. This is an intersection. You know, all these spaces where lines meet another line, that's what I call an intersection. And that point is where I'll lift my hand. So say I'm drawing and, oh my gosh, I feel uncomfortable. My hand's kind of shaky. I'm going to lift, maybe turn my paper or turn my hand and then finish the line. So again, I just like to, when I have to, um, to readjust, I'll lift at any kind of like intersection. And as we're um, outlining here, there might be a point where intersections aren't an option. And I'll show you guys what I do if I come across that kind of scenario. But at this point, if anyone has any, you know, pen questions, just let me know.
And again, I have had a few years of experience with this. So if I'm moving too quickly, just tell me to slow down. Okay, so I got an intersection and now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the paper. Again, I'm just moving and grooving with what is comfortable for me. Okay. Okay, so for this shape here, I don't really have an intersection point. So what I'll do is get somewhere to my hand is you know, ready to lift, I'll stop. And then I almost use the same technique, but with, um, with the pen as I do with the markers with this kind of flick. So see how up here there's more uh, pressure. Let me lift this up for y'all to see. There's more pressure applied and then I just kind of lift it or I like almost pet the paper in a sense to get my hand situated and comfortable. And then I'll start the line. So when I'm working right here, Again, I'll kind of like get my hand comfortable and then I'll finish it. Now granted, I can't draw that with my hand only supporting it. I'm gonna put it back down on the, on the surface. Yeah. But yeah, I'll kind of like gently get in the right zone and then I'll finish the line. And this, I mean, this just takes practice because these lines are pretty skinny. Um, luckily, the multi-liner goes up to 1.0. So if you want a very thick marker, I mean, thick pen, Copic has got you covered. Shannon, we actually have a technique question right here. Uh, Cynthia okay. asks, seems like you would outline from the top down not to smudge it, or am I the only one who smudges? Are you, what are some ways that uh, folks can avoid smudging their ink? Yeah, so um, again, when I was started this, I was working on this side. What I should have done uh, is work over here because I'm right-handed and then move over. So if you, you know, um, want to avoid smudging, you can do that. If you've got a big piece that you're working on and you're able to move the paper, I'm a big fan of moving the paper to avoid the smudges. So again, if you noticed, because I started off only on that side, I'm right-handed. So I don't want to smudge that. So I just turn the paper upside down. And now I'm just, again, my hand is off to the side. It's in my works, like my desk. So I don't have to worry about the smudges. But yeah, so it just it just takes time and a little bit of practice. But again, um, I've had a few years of experience and trust me, I have smudged a lot of things. But in a weird way, I kind of like those little mistakes because it makes it like, you know, have that human touch to it. It looks nice. Okay. So yeah, I'm just kind of working my way up here. And again, I'm going outside my uh, border. And this is also a time where um, smaller shapes can be your friend when you're first starting off how to use these multiliners. So if you've got really big shapes to, you know, outline, um, it can be a little more intimidating just because you know, what do I do if I lift my hand or, you know, what if it smudges or, you know, so if you're starting off, I would recommend smaller shapes are going to be easier to outline. Okay, we're almost there, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with us this afternoon. I'm really excited to see how these look. Okay, got that intersection right there. So I'll stop, move my hand, come back around again. Perfect. Okay, I gotta kind of get my hand comfortable, kind of test that line and then finish it off right there. Okay, so yeah. And um, I'm gonna pause for a second and just show you guys this. So I've got just a regular eraser and if I try and erase over this swatch I made earlier, the color doesn't lift and the color doesn't smudge because it's been dried. So again, very true black 
rich colors. So yeah, that's a really great feature about these. Okay, and I'm just gonna slowly kind of roll this in front of the screen if anyone wants to see where I'm at so far. So again, we've got these nice areas of darker pigment to the lighter pigments. You've got, you know, really great lines going on here. But yeah, say like in this area, like my line came outside and into this other segment, I can go back over and add a thicker line right there if I want more just to cover it up. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start to add some line variation. So like I showed up here, you know, it's the same line, but I almost drew like a parallel line right next to it to fade into the thin line. We're gonna do um, some of that now. So again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and follow my own instruction and work on this, uh, this side first and then move over, so no smudge. Okay, I like to just go around the outside shapes so that each little, you know, segment of three, each wave will stand out. So again, I'm just kind of taking my pen and running a parallel line next to that first one. And if I wanna make it a little thicker, I can. But the reason I am doing this is so that each um, shape stands out. So I'm just going to, you know, keep these lines as is for the most part, and then just add a parallel line on the outside. This just gives your bookmark a little bit more contrast. Okay. We're almost done. I'm so excited. Okay. Keep working our way up here. Are there any other um, multi-liner questions in the chat, Nate, that need to be addressed? Or are we good? Uh, let's see. I did say multi-liners dry pretty quickly, but since you are the one actually working with them right now, do you want to tell the audience um, generally how quickly they, they dry? Yeah, so, um, I mean, oh gosh, I don't know the exact time, but within like 30 Short, seconds. Short, right? It's like, like, yeah, 30 seconds, a minute, depending on how much ink you put down, but like, it's quick. Yeah. Yeah. And for example, like say I just keep on adding ink to the same spot over and over and over and over, that might take a little more time because you've overwhelmed the paper and it needs time to soak. Mm -hmm. But if you're just going along and doing your dandy thing with your lines, it should be fine. So maybe that's been 10 seconds. Let's test it. It's dry. Okay, cool. So about 10, 15 seconds, but again, just depends on how much you're soaking the paper. Oh, I do want to mention too that the multi-liners um, come in like 10 colors. So they have a really good variety. You've got your brown, your sepia, your warm, your cool gray. Pink and lavender are very fun colors as well as the cobalt and the wine. So we've got a variety, not just black, but in case you maybe want to outline your character designs, not in black, but maybe like a brown, those are also available. And for those out there watching, um, I'm curious to know if anyone has used a multiliner before or what their like go-to pen usually is. Because again, mine is a multiliner and mine is the, you know, 0.5. But I'm wondering like, do people like to work you know, in a point three or a point one. Curious to see. Well, we're getting some answers from folks. I uh, actually do have another customer question. What do you do to clean up a smudge? Oh, yes, smudges. So there is, with your eraser, um, there is a slight chance you can pick up a smudge, but not necessarily everything all the time. So let me take Actually, let me bring my practice sheet back out again because it's the same paper I'm using now. So I'm gonna add ink, try and smudge it. <laughs> that didn't really even smudge. Okay, let me try it again. Yeah, it, it doesn't even really smudge even if I try and smudge it right away. Okay, so if you see that, 
Um, I brushed my hand over it as soon as I could, and there's a kind of a smudge right there. Not, not really. Um, but again, I'm also using good marker paper. I'm going to take this and try and erase right there. Okay, now I'll show you guys. Yeah, there's nothing. So depending on your paper, I think will be the best because I got good paper in front of me. Um, they're not smudging at all. So, and even if you do have a slight, let me try it again really quick. A lot of ink, smudge. Okay, that's more of a smudge. I tried harder that time. So you got more of a smudge right there, right? So I'm just gonna take my regular eraser and try and work that off. Okay, so I'm just gonna try and take this and let lift off that pigment. And what's great about these two is that they're water-based, so they won't stain the paper permanently per se, like a Sharpie would. Um, but yeah, that's what it looks like with the eraser. So we went from a decently large smudge to um, pretty much nothing. So they don't really smudge that much. Okay. Do I need to show that again or am I good? I think we got it. Got it? Okay. Well, sweet. Um, but yeah, like reason number 700 why I love Copic markers and the Copic pens. They're really high quality. Oh, and I will say though that um, this particular pen, this is just the regular multi-liner. Um, this one, uh, whenever the ink dries out, you have to throw it away. It's disposable. But Copic being Copic with their love of refills and changeable nibs, if you buy the multi-liner SP, that you can actually refill and change the nibs. When I found that out when I was in high school, I was like, no way, this is sorcery. I had no idea. But the physical difference between this and the one that's refillable, I'll place that here. The refillable one, um, let me get one out real quick, looks like this. So this is the one that's refillable. This one, of course, because it's refillable is gonna be a little more expensive, but this has a really smooth to the touch aluminum body. It's really great. Um, and then obviously less just like the other pens, you can snap the cap on the other side. Um, it just has this SP label. The ink inside though is the exact same ink. Like I said, only difference, different material and um, replaceable features. Otherwise it's the same exact pen as what I'm showing you guys today. Okay, just wanted to get that out there because I've also had my SP pen um, about five years now, that 0.5 I just showed you. So I know that I've heard Copic markers can be expensive, but they literally can last you decades. So it's to me 100% worth the investment, especially as an avid illustrator and creator. Okay, I think I might color one more little segment here of adding another layer of pigment. And then I think I'm about done with my um, copy in front of me. If anyone um, has any other questions for me or maybe I'll actually just go ahead and hold this up. Yeah, so this is what I've got. Really nice line variation, really good variety of layers so we can show more depth. Yeah, and this is the final step. So. You can faintly see my pencil marks here. I'm just gonna cut this out real quick and this is it. So we're almost wrapped up. Grab my scissors. And we have gone obviously a little over time here. So for those that need to log off, um, again, this is gonna be recorded. Okay, here we go. There's just some differences right there. And then I do wanna show you guys this example. 
So this one, I actually cut a hole or just used a hole punch at the top and cut through. I read some beefy, thick books, so I like the string feature on the end of my bookmark. But again, you guys can customize these and finish them off as you want. Um, I also Shannon. have just like, Shannon, yes. If you use uh -huh. markers on the other side, would it bleed through? So like if you yeah, made it so yeah, so my suggestion for that is just to be safe, I would stay away from doing that. Um, you can always, you know, color or, you know, make another rectangle this exact size and glue it together or tape it together. But um, I can show you what that would look like. So say I use my darkest color, B06, and maybe I start to add in some color on the back side. I'm not, I'm not going to fill it all the way in, but just to show you, um, you can't really see anything here bleeding through, but again, it just depends on how much you soak it. Yeah. How much, um, how much actually is, how much ink's put on the paper? Yeah, exactly. Um, on this one, I went ahead and just cut out a piece of construction paper. So some kind of color and fun pattern and um, glued it to the back. So again, I read beefy books, so I like to have these thick. So that's why I put two papers together. And then I also put um, like a painter's sealer, like a little sealant. So it's got a little bit of a sheen. And in case I'm drinking tea or something before bed uh, while I'm reading, it won't um, destroy my um, alcohol ink. So, but yeah, those are just some ways to kind of top it off and finish it. But that is using only three markers and one pen to make a bookmark. So yeah, all of this with just four pieces of Copic supplies. So again, these products can really go a long way and have a lot of powerful punch to them. Okay, does anyone have any other questions or anything I can help with? I think that's it. Okay, sweet. Well, I'm gonna drop this here and I'm sure Nate will as well, but um, I do want to see before everyone logs off, if they have time, just to share what they have drawn. SP, go ahead and turn on your camera. Let's see, let's see what everybody's work is so far. Hold it yeah. up to the camera. Let's see what you got. Ah, oh, sweet. So we can just scroll through, see what everybody's got. Looking good, looking good. A lot of practice lines there. Very nice. Yeah, so I see um, the name SP. Those waves look great. So is it Wendy? I like the green in there as well. That looks awesome. Yeah, Nicholas, I like that. A uh, little bit of calligraphy on there too. That's great. Oh, I like to practice. Sweet. Looking good, everybody. This is really fun. I'm so yeah, glad you guys could join good. us today too. Yeah, a lot of folks came in. A lot of folks had a good time. I'm really looking forward to doing the next one. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. But yeah, again, before we all log off, um, just thank you guys so much. And thanks for the engagement on the chat. Um, again, we'll be back next week on the same Thursday at 4 p.m. Central. So that one is using um, the six piece Chow Brights colors. And again, when you sign up for the class, it'll list the supplies there and give you like a sneak peek for the demo. Um, but yeah, okay. I think we're good. Thank you guys for joining. Uh, Nate, anything else you want to add? Or No, I think that's it. I've posted all our social channels right here. Once again, you can see tag follow us at Copic Official US on any one of these platforms and more. I link to all of those. Uh, please use the tag hashtag Copic with us and hashtag make it with Michaels for any of these projects and more. And we'll see you all next week. Yes, thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys next week. All right, guys.